Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Chairman. Today we're examining Congressman Gardner's bill to change the approval process for liquefied natural gas exports. Uh, I uh, said it when we first started discussing the possibility of LNG exports. I have an open mind, uh, but I want to talk about some of my concerns. A number of studies predicted that LNG exports would have mildly positive economic effects, and since then, DOE has moved aggressively to approve LNG exports. Today, they've approved seven export proposal, proposals, and they're continuing to examine uh, uh, other applications as well. We need to carefully consider the impact of LNG exports on natural gas prices and the impact of higher prices on American consumers and manufacturers. Uh, and we also need to look at the impact of LNG exports on global carbon emissions. Increasing UX exports uh, would allow other countries to move from coal to natural gas, reducing their carbon emissions abroad, but LNG exports could increase U.S. carbon pollution by shifting electricity generation back to coal and increasing fugitive methane emissions. I'm not opposed to DOE's considering applications for additional LNG exports, but I want those reviews to be thorough. I'm concerned about the approach of this bill. The bill would short-circuit the established review process for pending and future LNG export applications. It requires DOE to approve essentially unlimited LNG exports to all 159 World Trade Organization countries without any determination that such exports are in the public interest or whether they would have uh, significant adverse impacts on domestic uh, natural gas prices, manufacturing, and jobs. DOE would have to immediately grant the 25 LNG export applications currently pending. They would uh, then also have to, uh, in, in doing that, by the way, uh, that would result in approved export amount of 36 billion cubic feet per day, that's almost half of all natural gas consumed daily in the United States. Unlimited LNG exports would have serious impacts on consumers and manufacturers. That's why major companies like Dow, Alcoa, and Nucor have raised concerns about this bill. Proponents of unlimited LNG exports contend we need to help Ukraine and our Euro European allies resist Russian aggression. This bill will not result in LNG exports to Europe for several years, if at all. No LNG export facilities currently exist in the continental United States. The first export terminal will not begin initial operations until late 2015. Export capacity will not ramp up until other facilities uh, until 2017 or 2018. When the U.S. actually begins to export significant quantities of LNG three or four years from now, where will it go? Well, it won't direct, go directly to Ukraine because Ukraine does not have any facilities to import or regasify LNG. In fact, it may not even go to Europe. Uh, we should be sending a clear message, message to Russia. Its aggression will have costly consequences. But I uh, worry whether this really has the f impact we want on a foreign policy basis. Russia is a member of the World Trade Organization. This bill adds Russia to the list of countries that can receive American natural gas without any DOE review. That's a very strange way to send a signal to uh, support our American allies in Europe. This uh, hearing should help us uh, have an opportunity to think carefully about the bill, and I want to yield the balance of my time to Mr. McNerney.